I've just started some light front crawl, everyone. We haven't started yet, don't panic. Just started some light front crawl for a bit of a warm up, getting ready for when we start. So if you just want to join me, whether you're horizontal or vertical, just some light, easy full stroke front crawl. We will have time to build into this some more, so don't panic if you haven't missed anything. I'm just getting my equipment set up. Tonight's pretty basic, it's pretty easy. Uh, well, sorry, it's, <laughs> it's pretty basic and easy in terms of the equipment. I'm basically gonna just use my cords tonight on this main set. It is the Fitness Friday. Um, the dumbbells can add a little something. We'll discuss that later, but again, don't panic if you don't have them. I've got a resistance, uh, a short resistance band with me. I could make use of that, um, but again, it's not essential. We're gonna get our hard work done on the full stroke front crawl, and then we're gonna add a little active recovery in with some backstroke, just so that we can release the cords, we can stand up straight, whether you're pulling on your horizontal or vertical cords. Our active recovery will be done standing up, okay? And then that way we can more easily get our rotation in. Um, I had an interesting chat with someone on Twitter the other day, and basically, yeah, it, they, they just nailed it when they said, you know, it's very hard to stay bent over the hips for a significant period of time. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, what this vertical position will help with, okay? So if you were here last Friday, we're gonna create an inverse of the pyramid of pain. So we're gonna start with a big number, quite light. We're gonna build, 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 build through it. The length of time for each block of work is gonna decrease until we sort of hit the pinnacle and then we're gonna build it again. So we're gonna start in a moment with five minutes of light front crawl. Then we switch to 30 seconds of backstroke without any attachment to the core so you can stand up and get your full rotation in just so that we often, um, just to offset so much front crawl, it's good for your shoulders to reverse the movements. You'll definitely get some rotation in, which often can suffer a little bit with the vertical, uh, sorry, with the horizontal stretch cords. So it's gonna be a nice blend of both worlds, okay? So if you're with me, if you're happy and the system is in place, let's get ready for five minutes, full stroke. And you can build into this, Start to add a little bit of oomph as you get warm, as you get into it. Maybe you could drop down a stair or take a step back from your point of origin where the cords attach and just so you can work that a little bit harder, okay? So five minutes, please, swim those five minutes. Then we're gonna switch into our backstroke without the cords, get our rotation work done. Whether I'm on a swim bench, which is another great tool, um, fantastic way of getting your dry land swimming down. But I will hop off, create sets, create sessions, hop off and get some rotation working, whether I'm just doing sort of a standing torpedo drill, whether I'm drawing the sword, whether it's just plain old simple backstroke. It's all good in terms of getting you working, getting you rotating and just breaking that mold of being flat on the bench with the swim bench or if you are pivoted at the hips, creating that sort of flat, parallel to the floor back position. Obviously it's a little bit harder to get the hips flowing from side to side as you would with your full stroke front crawl. Good work everyone. So just a little diagnostic, let's run through the full stroke. So as I reach the top of the stroke, as I imagine I'm uh, entering and stretching forwards, I've got the arm extended forwards. I've got the elbows popping out wide. I'm pulling with the palm and the forearm. If I were horizontal and the camera to one side, you'd see a nice early vertical forearm here with the camera in this position. I'm trying to create that vertical position. Obviously it's horizontal, but imagine I'm sort of flip. I'm trying to make that happen by the time I reach the eyes, by the time I reach the eye line. Not too much effort at the front of the stroke. All I'm doing is setting up the position. And then once I'm vertical, once I'm in under the eyes, then I can drive and add a little bit more oomph. Okay. 
I have not gone with a particularly strong set of chords. In fact, I've added a little pulley to mine. You might have seen that in the uh, email with the uh, dry land attachment sent. Just, you know, doing 30, 40 minutes of chords. Some of those elastic versions are quite strong. And we're looking for some endurance, not just flat out strength work here. And, and really, um, you know, we should, we could be doing this for a, a lot longer, but um, the Zoom basic package only gives me 40 minutes, okay? But this is not too bad. Well, you know, we're just ticking over at the moment. We're not trying to, you know, qualify for the Olympics off the back of this. Um, it's just to keep the muscle movements fresh, keep the memory going, um, remind ourselves what we're missing, and just do something to, to offset that inability to get into the water. There's three minutes, there's three minutes. We've got two minutes to go. And the pattern's gonna be continuous, 30 seconds of active recovery. Um, I'm recommending the backstroke so we get our rotation in. And from five minutes, the next block will be four, come back to 30 seconds. Then we go to three, then we go to two, to one, always with 30 seconds of backstroke in between. And then we're gonna build it up again, okay? We're gonna build it up from one to two, to three, to four, to five. Okay, if I've got my maths right, it's about 33 minute block of work, a 33 minute block of work. And that will be quite a lively main set for everyone. Okay, if you were here last Friday, we went with the traditional one minute to two to three to four to five and then down the other side, we had a little bit longer recovery in between with a minute. This one's a little bit more solid. We're two weeks into this now, we've got some strength, we've got some good technique and we can build on that. We can really work on this. That's four minutes just gone. Last minute, everyone, last minute. So arms might have developed a little bit of fatigue. Try not to lose your rhythm. Try not to lose your length of stroke. I try to work on keeping the arms at 180. I don't always swim like that. Um, but in terms of the way the cords work, if you've got this pulley system and you can just keep the hands at opposite to each other, I find this works quite well. If you've got the more traditional elastic with the uh, centerpiece attached to a fence, a railing, whatever it might be, and you can only do sort of the, the butterfly movement, that's okay, that's okay. We're gonna switch over to that backstroke in a moment, and we're gonna get our rotation done at that point. Um, you know, you're still making those symmetry and symmetrical movements, obviously, but they're just together. I'm trying to mimic left and right over and over again, and we're going to come back to this in 30 seconds. Three, two, one, fantastic. Okay, I'm going to add some light dumbbells to my backstroke just so it helps keep a little bit of flow, gives me a little bit of more of a feel for the water. Let me come forwards. My cords are hanging, getting in the way a little bit. Okay, now switch from side to side, switch from side to side. This is a great way to start thinking about backstroke technique if you've never really done it before. Again, the only way to do backstroke is with the hands opposite each other. There's no sort of alternatives like there are in front crawl. But just sweep, keep the hands opposite, rotate from side to side, bring the shoulder through towards the chin. I'll talk to you perhaps about the catch position on back throw on the next one, okay? In three, two, one, we're out of here, back onto the cords, back onto the cords. Okay, four minutes, four minutes. Feeling warm, feeling strong, maybe you can take another step back or a step down and start to put a little bit more effort into your full stroke front crawl. Good work, everyone, good work. So we keep talking about this catch position and I don't know if you had a chance to listen into the little um, thing we put together last night, swim tips from the stairwell. And I was talking about wetsuit repairs. Now, a lot of them have obviously looked at good swim technique and many of you might own um, the right sort of wetsuit. But have a look at the forearm, and you might well see a different type of material. Some ripples, dimples, waves, wedges, all sorts of things going on. And that's so that when you turn that arm over into that cat position, there's a turbulence created, there's a disturbance, and that actually makes it harder to pull the arm through. So with a nice streamlined body, tipping the fingertips, over early, keep the wrist pretty firm, pivoting at the elbow, you get that forearm in a vertical position, but you must be careful 
I see a lot of people at races just hurry and put their wetsuits on and those panels sort of slip around the arms and you've got that smooth neoprene section, literally where the ripple should be. And that's not gonna help because that's gonna slip more. That's gonna, it's gonna like, like running on a treadmill. You don't want that arm slipping under the body the way a, a, a foot would just fly under the body on a treadmill. You want the hand to anchor, to hold as best you can and the body to be pulled over. Sometimes in water we forget that just because we're, it's obviously a fluid, it's, it's liquid, and it doesn't sort of work the same way on dry land where you take a, you plant the foot and, and travel forwards. But we should keep that in mind that you're anchoring, holding onto the water and traveling over and past it. And that way it might just help refresh your, um, your thoughts on technique as you're swimming. Just think, am I, could I be narrow? Could I be smaller? Could I be more efficient? Could I hide from the water more? Could I hold more water? Am I exposing that forearm early? Good work, everyone. Coming up on a minute to go, on a minute to go. The four minute block has flown by. Okay. We're gonna go back to our backstroke, back to our backstroke. Now above the water, from the hip upwards over the face, the arms stay nice and straight, but under the water, and if you don't get your rotation in, and that's why, you know, if you can get a hanger backstroke, it beautifully complements full stroke front crawl. The body position is, is very similar. You're working to keep the head still. The shoulders are switching from side to side, and there is a catch position, and we'll talk to you a little bit more about that when we go into it. 30 seconds to go, 30 seconds to go. You're trying to enter with the little finger, and then soon after that, the elbow pivots to expose the forearm as you then, keep going guys, keep going, just have a look if you can. So from here, the elbow tips, okay, you're on your side, and again, you're trying to push that through towards the hip, okay? So up over the surface, enter with the little finger, keep the shoulder as it brushes past the chin, you've rotated, elbows dropped, and you're pushing through. Three, two, one, fantastic. All right, come into your backstroke, please. Come into your backstroke. Nice and relaxed. If you're just not getting the hang of backstroke, you can always just work on your rotation with that simple torpedo drill we do. Just switching from side to side, keeping your head still. There's also the option of drawing the sword, where we take that sword out of the hip, sweep through, take it towards the back of the neck. And again, go 10 on each side. I've got the clock in the way on my left arm, forgive me, okay? But anything that just gets the shoulders switching from side to side to help offset the full stroke. In three, two, one, fantastic. We're coming back to full stroke. Three minutes this time, guys, three minutes. Here we go. Again, if you can take a step back, put a little bit more tension on, keep the hands opposite each other, switching from side to side, Remember, we're trying to expose the forearm early. Use the palm and the forearm from a pivoted elbow position to send the water back. If you've got the stretch cords hanging from a, in a vertical position, you can get the hips involved a little bit more. Keep the hand pulling down the center, left and right arms behaving just like a mirror image. The minute one arm does something different to the other, then it's going to reflect in your stroke and it's going to deviate you off course. It's not going to enable you to swim as straight as possible. Left and right, same angles, same speed, same trajectory. I kind of keep it simple by trying to pull under the backbone all the way through, knowing that the hip at the back of the stroke will actually roll out of the way. Okay, so you don't have to go around the hip and again force problems by sweeping from side to side. Keep it sweeping under the body. And again, if you've got space, I know it's not easy in a public session, but if ever you get a lane to yourself, take the opportunity to swim down the middle and just use that black line that's on the bottom of the pool quite often in the middle on the bottom. Use that as your coach, as your eyes to give you some feedback. Open your eyes, close them. Are you still on top of it? Take three or four strokes, be careful obviously. But a nice balanced symmetrical stroke, you should stay on top of it, four, five, six strokes. Look down at the line, guide the hands between it and your backbone. And honestly, you will have a much straighter stroke come race day. 
Last minute, everyone, last minute. Keep it going. If it's starting to fatigue and it's starting to shorten a little bit, take a step up. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, just take a step up or a step forwards. It'd be better to keep the technique, keep the length, rather than start to shorten, shorten, shorten. That's not gonna help anyone because then you upset that little window of opportunity to get some good air in. Maybe on the way, on the back side, we will talk a little bit more about breathing, but for now, just keeping the head still, focusing on the arms, repeating nicely. Okay, coming up to finish the three minutes in 15. In 10, nine, eight, don't let it drift above the hip, don't exit early, push through to the end in three, two, one. Good, good, we're out of here. Okay, head nice and still, rotate from side to side. If you've got the space, you've got the coordination, your shoulders are healthy, come in and do your backstroke, be so much more. Add some light dumbbells, just so it gives you that little bit of weight and you can really feel as if you've got the water around you and you've got some purchase on it. And switching from side to side, recovering, little finger enters, palm sends the water towards the feet. Recover with a straight arm. As soon as you hit the water, pushing through in three, two, one, fantastic. Okay, another step back if you can. Two minutes, here we go, two minutes. Take a step forwards if the arms are getting just a little bit too much, a little bit too tired and you're feeling that impacting your technique. Just get what's comfortable for you. You've still got a good solid 15 minutes of swimming to go. Maybe on the next round, have a drink, shake the arms out, get the breathing under control. If you can, take a step back. That's all good, all good. This is the two minutes. About a minute to go, a minute to go, everyone. Okay, so if I were turning to breathe, and again, if you've got a, the, you can see your reflection in the, in, the, in the phone, or if you try this with a mirror later, in terms of the timing of the breath, I'm trying to pull down, and as I glance to the side, the hand's traveling under the face, and I win training, I will try to mix it up that I breathe every third stroke, okay? If you leave it, leave it, leave it, and then get the turn in, you can upset the rhythm by breathing too late. Equally, you don't want to breathe too early, but if you just pull down, pull down, and as the hand travels under the face, turning into the side, I think that gives a nice, optimum You've still got the hand traveling under the body. You're not gonna sort of crunch and, and, and sort of swing and build momentum and throw the arm and upset the head position. It's not a bad compromise, okay? In five, four, three, two, one. Fantastic, back to your backstroke, please. Dumbbells, if you've got them, actually. Um, I've also got stretch cords here, and that's an also quite a nice way to put a little bit of tension onto your backstroke. And again, it will help you keep the hands at 180. Okay, here's my stretch cords. There's the elbow pivoting. There's the straight arm on the surface. Switching the shoulders from side to side. Keep the head nice and still. If you want to see some nice backstroke, have a look on YouTube, look up Missy Franklin. You might actually see there was a time when she was doing um, some prep for the Olympic trials in the US and she was doing some great swimming with a bottle on her head. In three, two, one, fantastic. Last minute, everyone, last minute, let's go for it. Take a step back, strong finish, strong finish, strong finish. Here we go, last minute, that's all it is. That's how important it is keeping the head still, that the backstrokers, with a cup of water or a sports bottle. Um, but Missy Franklin was pretty special at that, keeping her head still, being so aware of body position, she could actually do a backstroke flip turn, catch the bottle, push off in streamline, and re um, come up with it in the right position. Good work, everyone. Strong to the finish, strong to the finish. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, fantastic.
Good work. Okay, let's take the 30 seconds to have a drink, to have a little shake, get the triceps, maybe a little stretch. This is quite nice um, just to put a little bit of length back in there. Now they're nicely warmed. Just using the wall, leaning into them nicely. Don't worry about the backstroke on this one. Just get some life back into the triceps. And we're going to build it up again. We're going to build it up with the two minutes, with the two minutes. Okay. Again, adjust your length, your distance from the point of attachment. In three, two, one, here we go. Two minutes, everyone, two minutes. Do your best to maintain the rhythm that you created on the way up. The length where you were at when you were at your freshest. Maybe you just had a little breather and was feeling strong. Maybe we can take it back a step. I'm gonna to try to add a little bit more here. But it's all about the technique really. Long distance front crawl. Obviously you need fitness, you need strength, but when they should all come together, they should all come together to create what we really want, which is endurance, the ability to repeat movement after movement, the length of the stroke repeatedly without the stroke fading. You know, imagine how many thousands of arm revolutions there are now in, in a 10K. There, there's, there's so many. And if the technique's not good, you run the risk of injury, Worst case, you won't swim straight. If one arm is straight and you're leaning on that to help stabilize the breathing, one arm is sending you up and the other arm is pulling you forward, you can't possibly hope to swim in a straight line. So what happens? You start to deviate left or right. And then you need to sight more often to correct that alignment and see where you're going. Yeah, granted you could, um, undo all of that with a nice pair of feet to draw from but um i don't know maybe it's an age thing i used to get mixed up in some heated racing now i prefer a nice sort of patch of water on my own and enjoy a good swim um but drafting is another discussion we might talk about that in the stairwell another time okay in 10 9 8 7 6 5 get ready for our backstroke pick up your dumbbells if you've got them Three, two, one, well done, well done. Dumbbells or stretch cords or nothing at all, nothing at all. Let's try to come back to backstroke if you can. As soon as that upper arm brushes the ear, we're dropping the elbow down, trying to stay narrow. What you'll see a lot of people doing is pulling with a straight arm and you can see how that would just sort of push you from side to side, push you from side to side. Try to get that elbow in and that's gonna keep you narrow keep you moving forwards without that shifting from side to side in three two one fantastic back to the cords all right what have the arms got what have the arms got can you come back down a step do you need to go forwards a step it's up to you it's up to you the fact that you're here on a friday night working out it's a, it is a holiday i know um tells me you're dedicated you're disciplined so you're not gonna, you're not cheating anyone other than yourself if you're slacking off. But it's a good sign that you're here with me tonight and we're getting this done. Three minutes, everyone, three minutes. Okay. If like me, you might wanna just run a little technical diagnostic, you know, every few minutes on a long event, I'll just run through a little mantra, just check. Am I rotating the shoulder finishing into the chin? Is the head nice and still except when I'm breathing? Or lifting to sight? Are the hips shifting? The legs kicking behind nice and narrow, nice and small, staying hidden behind the body, not breaking out. Keep the toes pointed so I'm at my most streamlined. And just basically not expose any unwanted surface area. It doesn't take a, a genius sort of to um, think back to their old physics days about surface area drag and, and the relationship. You don't have to be a highly qualified swim coach. You know, if I finish my stroke here, 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 and I've got all of this exposed, this gap between the ear and the upper arm, you're just going to work harder shunting that through the water. Okay, so the moment you can close these gaps down, stay narrow, switching from side to side, you are gonna have an easier time. That may not make you much faster, but you'll conserve a lot more energy. You'll absolutely have more energy for the back end of a race. Um, 
it will be a, a, a much better all round performance. Good work. Under a minute to go, under a minute to go. And then we've just got the two swings remaining. Unfortunately, they're the big ones again. But this is where the arms will start to hurt a little bit. Do your best to keep the length in the stroke. Remember the hips are rolling out of the way. Finish long, reach for the knees. Don't just finish at the hips. I'm also putting, I don't know if you can see, I'm also putting a little pivot, maybe one more step. I'm putting a little pivot at the back of my stroke to keep the palm facing the wall, the floor <laughs> I'm swimming away from. And that's often um, overlooked. So we focus on the fingertips, the elbow pivot at the front, but also there's a little bit of a wrist movement at the back of the stroke, okay? We'll come back to that in a moment in three, two, one. Good job, good job. Okay, back to our backstroke. I'm gonna go with the cord this time. Okay, keep the tension on, keep the hands at 180. Stay narrow, drop the elbow as you pass by the ear. Push from here, enter with the little finger, drop the elbow, and then it's a question of shifting and pushing the water through. Good work, everyone. In three, two, one, Excellent. Let's go back to our chords, back to our chords. What have you got left? What have you got left? Four minutes. Here we go. Take a step back, take a step forwards. Move up or down a stair if you're with me in the stairwell. And let's go hard for the last four. And then we've just got the five to wrap it up. Okay, good work, everyone. So I'm adding some breathing this time. I did mention earlier, in training, I like to breathe every third knowing that that's going to keep my stroke at its most balanced, at its most symmetrical. It's going to take the least amount of, uh, the, the least toll on my shoulders. It's going to stop any bad habits from building up. But on race day, I know that I can get that breath in every two from one side or the other as conditions dictate. Sometimes I might mix it up three on one side, three on the other. And even whatever, whatever side I'm breathing to, I'm always trying to pivot with the elbow, trying to keep the form involved. Never sort of get lazy and just drop that out of a straight shoulder pivot point and bring the head up to the surface. That's where things go wrong. Imagine you lost that breathing stroke. Ironman, 3,800 meters, possibly swimming three and a half to 4,000 strokes. Every time you breathe, a straight arm push down to help you come up to the surface, that's an awful lot of wasted strokes, okay? So whatever you're doing, and this is great, you can maybe see a mirror, you can see your reflection in the phones or the laptops, work on your technique, regardless of whether you're turning the head to breathe, you wanna pivot, pivot, and avoid that straight arm propping you up. That's why I like a lot of work with the central snorkel. Central snorkel is a great way, again, public sessions don't really like them. Um, but if you've got a chance to use a central snorkel, keep the head still, just as we're doing here for the majority of this work, you can work on thousands of repetitions with that accuracy, with the arms doing the right things over and over again, without the head turning, without potentially building up the bad habit leaning on that straight arm. Good, everyone. About 90 seconds to go, 90 seconds to go. Take a step forwards or a step up if you're starting to lose the back end of the stroke. Do your best, still switching from side to side, pulling central under the body. Don't wiggle too much with the old fashioned S pull. We don't go wide of the shoulder, we don't go across the backbone. You've got a very narrow channel between the backbone sort of the width of the shoulder and really there's a very small subtle S but it's really more of a slither so you want to be within that movement under the body. Very rare that you see anyone swim particularly wide or sweep across. It's a little bit old-fashioned. Left, we left that behind in the 70s and the 80s. Okay so you can just go forwards by sending the water backwards with the biggest paddle possible and that means keeping the hand pretty much under the body. And again, come back, into the, come back to the black line on the bottom of the pool, those two tile widths they often comp consist of, that generally is more than enough in terms of 
pulling the arm, keeping it on track under the body. 20 seconds to go, 20 seconds to go. We're nearly there, everyone. Good, good, good. In 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good job, good job. Come into your backstroke, come into your backstroke. Are you using cords? Are you using dumbbells or nothing at all? Just get your rotation in, switching from side to side, switching from side to side. It's often what we lose with the cords, but just bring your rotation back. 10 seconds to go before we get that last block. Good, everyone, keep the head still. Pivot at the elbow to get the forearm involved. In three, two, one, fantastic, here we go. Last five minutes, make it count. Hope you will build up a little bit of a sweat. Five minutes to go, five minutes to go. Think back to the rhythm, the speed of the hands, possibly on that four, the first four minutes or the three minutes when you were really in your groove. Now we wanna be working hard. We were probably still warming up on the initial five. Take a step back if you can. Take a step back if you can. Keep the stroke long, don't cheat it, don't exit early. Exiting early is one of the worst things you can do really in terms of um, causing the stroke to speed up, narrowing that window of opportunity to get a good breath in, speeding up the breath, which means you have to breathe more often. It all gets hurried, it all gets shorter, and it's just a, a downward spiral into bad technique fight it and this is often the thing that separates triathletes to uh to, to swimmers that have had a, an upbringing um if i'm sort of starting to fatigue i'll go back to counting some strokes try to recognize what's uh, causing the problem try to pinpoint that's the idea of that mantra that little diagnostic that little 10 point tune up where's the drag why is the stroke count gone up what's being introduced, what's slowing me down, rather than sort of the mentality of just applying more power, more strength, and just trying to rip through, which we often see at the end of sets. So start to think like a swimmer, keep your streamline, keep the technique. Don't just assume more bubbles, more strength, more power will fix things. Try to do the smart thing and fight it with technique. Switching from side to side, keep the head still. If you're adding your breathing, fantastic. Don't worry if that's just a little bit too much to manage without the water in front of you. If you are breathing, mix it up from side to side. Try not to lean on that arm. We wanna get away from that straight arm push down. If you need some more guidance on that, I've got a couple of blog articles which might help. A couple of nice drills. I'll upload this later. Um, to YouTube, if you have a look for the YouTube Swim for Try channel, have a look at the thumb catch drill. It's shown it's up there, and that's one of the best drills you can do to keep pivoting early, focus on the elbow as that point of origin for that first part of um, the stroke where you apply the power and get away from the shoulder being the pivot point. Good work, everyone, good work. Last couple of minutes, keep it going, keep it going. Head nice and still. Get the hips involved, don't let them go flat. If you can add a little bit of a wiggle through the hips, even if you're horizontal, wouldn't be the end of the world, just to remind you that you are swimming and not just doing a strength resistance workout in the gym. We are trying to equate this and, and have it transfer into the water. And next time, if you can in any way, mount your stretch cords vertically so you can stand upright. I promise you will get so much more out of this. Good work, everyone. Last 90 seconds, 90 seconds to go. Keep going, keep going. If we were really technical and advanced here, you could possibly add a, a metronome uh, beep in a way to tickle, uh, tick the rhythm off all the way through to keep the stroke long to keep the stroke rate up. Um, I think that'll just drive me crazy, so I'll just skip that. But something to consider if you feel that the, your technique is just lacking that little bit of focus. 
Last minute, everyone, last minute, pick it up. Can we drop down a step? Can we take a step back? Just give it a good, strong finish now. Keep pivoting with the elbow. Turn the fingertips over. Imagine they're pointing to the bottom of the pool. You've got a nice early vertical forearm, sending the water down, pushing it through. Don't let it escape above the hips. Last 35 seconds. Come on now, sprint finish. It's the Olympic final 10K. We've been cruising along, ticking over about a 105 pace for the first 9.6K. Now we're starting to ramp it up, ramp it up. Sprint finish into the tunnel, into the chute. Last 20 seconds. Come on now. Finish strong, finish strong. Last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well done, everybody. Well done. Good, good, good. Okay, let's have a nice, easy cool down. I'm going to move my cords out of the way. Nice, easy cool down. Reverse the movement. Have a look in the dry land document. There's a lot of good stretches to help you reverse the shoulders, relax the shoulders, unwind. Everything we do in terms of driving, in terms of front crawl, in terms of sitting at a laptop, everything turns the shoulders over. So anything you can do with the bands, with your posture, if you can start to add some more backstroke when we do finally get back into the pool, that would be amazing, okay? Nice and easy, nice and easy with the backstroke. Okay, let's take that into sweeping through from side to side, drawing the sword. Just bring the shoulder forwards, hand to the hip, sweep through, take it to the base of the neck. Let's go 10 on each arm. Oh, I must get a wider stairwell. It's a problem having long arms. Okay, 10 on each side. I'm going to move across, see if I can squeeze that in. Here we go. So breathing should be returning to normal. Get the triceps stretched out. Don't forget your rotation. Just keep the head still. Come back to some really simple movements. Let the hips follow. Zoom's gonna run out on me in about a minute. So by all means, carry on with some tricep stretches. I hope you enjoyed this. If there's anything you missed, it'll be on YouTube uh, later on this evening. There's other sessions available. And hopefully we'll do this all again on Monday. I'll send out the details, or if you can ping me an email, that would be helpful. I wish you all a good evening, and enjoy Easter. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you later.